She is known for being a Russian poet, journalist, and translator who wrote poetry that reflected her sense of Russianness, Jewish identity, and lesbianism. Recognized for her openness about her lesbian relationships, she has been referred to as Russia's Sappho. Her name is Sofia Yakovlevna Parnok. In the annals of literary history, one name stands out, Sofia Yakovlevna Parnok, a Russian poet whose impact on the world of poetry is immeasurable. Born into a well-to-do family of professional Jews, Parnok's uniqueness was evident from a young age. She wrote poetry that reflected her sense of Russianness, Jewish identity, and her own lesbianism, setting her apart from her peers. Her works were a powerful expression of her personal experiences and emotions. Completing her studies and moving to Geneva in 1905, Parnock initially attempted to study music but soon returned to Moscow. Wanting to distance herself from her father's control, she published her first book of poems in 1906 under the pseudonym Sophia Parnock and married Vladimir Valkenstein. However, the marriage quickly ended, leading Parnock to embark on a career as a journalist. From 1913 onwards, Parnock exclusively had relationships with women, using these love connections to fuel her creativity. Her muses, such as Marina Tsvetiva and Ludmila Erarskaya, inspired her to publish five collections of poetry and write librettos for opera. Unfortunately, Parnock's life was cut short by Graves' disease in 1933, leaving behind a legacy that would be rediscovered in later years. Barred from publication after 1928, Parnock's works fell into obscurity until the end of the Soviet period. It was only then that increased scholarship led to the publication of her collected works in 1979. While her early influential relationship with Svetiva is often highlighted, it is her works from 1928 onwards that are now recognized as her best. Sofia Yakovlevna Parnock's life and poetry serve as a reminder of the power of personal expression and the impact it can have on the world of literature. In the late 1920s, Sofia Parnock faced numerous challenges in her life. She was bedridden and suffering from writer's block, her works were prohibited from publication due to censorship, and she relied solely on translating the works of other authors to make a living. However, a glimmer of hope appeared when Maximilian Steinberg offered to complete Parnock's unfinished opera, Almost, and get it approved for production at the Bolshoi Theater. Despite political pressure, Parnock agreed to write a communist-themed prologue and epilogue for the opera. The production of Almost faced further complications when the conductor made changes without Parnock's consent and scheduled it for only a two-day run. Thankfully, Steinberg intervened and ensured that the opera was brought to completion. Finally, on June 24, 1930, Almas premiered at the Bolshoi Theater and was a resounding success, captivating the public with its powerful performance. After the triumph of Almas, Parnock's health began to decline, and she sought refuge in the countryside to recover. Upon her return to Moscow, she found a new apartment that provided more space and allowed her to host colleagues from Tsuberbiller's work. Parnock's infatuation with Maria Moksikova, a performer, fueled her creativity, and she embarked on writing a libretto for an opera dedicated to Moksikova. Though her feelings were not reciprocated, Parnock poured her emotions into her work, completing the libretto in 1931. In 1932, Parnock's last great love came into her life in the form of Nina Vedeneva, a Georgian physicist. Their relationship blossomed into a romance, despite Parnock still living with Tsuberbiller and opposition from Vedeneva's son. Vedeneva became Parnock's muse, inspiring her to write two cycles of poems, Ursa Major and Useless Goods. Their emotional bond deepened, but they had to keep their love hidden from most of Vedeneva's family and friends, spending their summers apart to maintain appearances. Do you want to explore more novelists? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.